What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at something that was actually requested by one of you guys and that is how to use multiple custom cells in a single table view. So here we've got our table view and we've got these five cells which have this image on the left and the label. Then we've got five image cells, uh, albeit the image is small, but it's a different cell. And then we've got this simple text-based cell. So these are all in fact in one table view and they are three kinds of cells. So we're gonna take a look at how to set these up. We'll further take a look at how to create cells both using the storyboard with a nib and completely with code. So that said, make sure you absolutely smash that like button down below. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm, helps me make more videos for you all. Uh, get excited, get Xcode ready, and let's jump right into it. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so let's get started by creating a new Xcode project. We'll stick with a single view application template and we'll call this project multiple custom cells. Let's save it on our desktop and let's jump right in. So before we can actually create our custom cells, uh, I've grabbed two images from Google. So let's just go to our assets and bring these in. We'll use these in our cells. So let's create one image set and let's select it and call it image one. And let's create one more and call it image two. Drag one of these in for image one and drag this one in for image two. Cool, so let me expand Xcode now to give ourselves a little more room to work and let's talk about how to use multiple cells, multiple custom cells rather. So let's start by creating a very basic table view and we're gonna use um, cells in the so we're going to create cells via code and we're also going to create cells via XIB so you guys get a full picture of how to do it with both. But the table view itself, we'll create that in code. So let's create a private constant called table view and it'll be a UI table view. Let's create a table in here. Whoops. We want that, we can return the table, and we want to register the cell in here. We're going to create one in a second, uh, but in view did load, we can say add sub view for the table view. We also want to say the table views delegate, oops, delegate is self, as well as the data source. To that end, we want to add the delegate and data source up here. And data source. And what else do we need to do? We should probably give this a frame. So let's override view, did layout sub views, like so. And let's say the table views frame is view.bounds, which will make it the entirety of our screen. And now you'll have an error up here because we need to implement two required functions for the data source. And those are number of rows, and we'll return just zero for now, and cell for row. And in this function, we DQ the cell we want to return, and it's going to give us an error right now. Let's just ignore it because we need to first register a cell. So let's create a cell and we're going to create it as a very simple class. So click that new file, Coco touch class, and we're going to create a sub view of a UI table, table view 
Yeah, I really can't type today. UI table view cell. And let's just call this simple table view cell. Leave this unchecked for now. Hit enter twice to create it. In here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two things. The first one is a static property called identifier, uh, which will be the name of the class. And then we're gonna create a static function, um, which actually we don't need. I was gonna create a static function to return the nib, but since we didn't create a nib or XIB, we can just leave the static property on here. So let's go back to the view controller and in the table creation, we can say table register the name of the class dot self for cell reuse identifier, the name of the class and that identifier property we created. And in the cell for row, now what we can do is we can say let cell is the table view. We want to DQ a cell with that identifier and for index path and we'll simply return the cell and the error over here will go away now and let's also come in here and just say cell dot text label dot text and just set some text in here so you can see that something is being returned and let's change the number of rows to 10 and let's build and run and we should have a table view with 10 rows with that label in it hopefully so there's our app and it's running and we've got maybe we oh, there it goes okay we've got our 10 rows so now we want to use more uh, cells that are customized so let's create another cell and we'll call this image cell so let's click this new file coco touch class and this will be a image table view cell and for this one let's use an xib just to illustrate that we can use this as well so check that box, hit enter twice. This will create the code file as well as the XIB. Now in here, again, we want to create that static let. So static let identifier. And in here we were going to add, or in the other one, we were going to add a static function for nib, but we want it in this one because we have an XIB or a nib. So we're gonna create a static function like so and return a nib with a name, which is the name of the uh, class. Bundle can be nil. In here, we also want to add an outlet for a image. So IB outlet var my image view UI image view. And we also want to add one function in here that we can call to configure the image. So public func configure with image name. And I'll just fix this. Well, let's leave it as image name. That's okay. Um, and what we're going to say is we're going to say my image view dot image is UI image named image name and this function can now be called from the view controller to actually pass in the image name for one of the two images that we put in our assets but before we do that let's go to the xib and we want to do two things in here uh, the first thing is select the cell over here open up the attribute inspector and paste in that cell identifier which in our case we just call the same name as the cell class uh, just something that I like to do, but in theory, you can have this be whatever you want, so long as it matches the identifier that you're registering with the table on the view controller. Now let's grab an image view, drag it on in, right click this, drag from my image view to the image view, select the image, and let's give this guy some constraints. So let's say 10, 10, 10, 10. And let's see, what else do we want to do now? We can basically go to the view controller. Let me just copy this identifier. Go to the view controller, and now we can register another custom cell. So very similar to what we did up here. We're going to say, let's ignore my notifications. We're going to say table.register, name of the class, 
But in this case, we have a nib, the xib. So instead of dot self, we're going to say dot nib, which is the function we created for the name of the class dot identifier. And in the uh, self row, the most important thing to understand is we want to return this uh, new nib cell that we created for uh, particular in indices. So generally what you're going to have is you're going to have an array of some data that backs your table view. So you might have, let's say, a model which has an image and then a model with some text. So based on what data you have driving your uh, table view, you want to show a related cell. For the purposes of this video, we know we're going to show 10 cells. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to say if the cell position is less than 5, we're going to show the image cell. And of course, if it's greater than 5, uh, 5 or greater, it'll not come into here and it'll show our hello world cell. So what we can actually do in here is pretty simple, actually. We can simply say let cell is table view. And we want to dequeue the cell with the identifier. Whoops, let me get rid of my antivirus pop-up that decides to uh, annoy all my videos. Um, dot identifier, and we're going to say for index path. And what's slightly important in here is here we also want to say as the name of the cell. So we're basically casting it with a force cast. And the reason is, is now we can say cell.configure with um, and pass in the image name. So image one and return cell. So if you don't actually cast it like we did over here and get rid of this, you'll see the second line was showing an error like so. And the reason is, is because when you DQ a cell, uh, the function is not aware of what kind of cell it's going to be. It just infers it to be a generic UI table view cell. And a generic UI table view cell does not have this function. So we need to, we need to tell uh, Swift, hey, whatever we're dequeuing in here will be this image table view cell. So let's run it and see what we get. Hopefully I didn't break anything. All right, cool. So we have this cell, two, three, four, five, and then we have the Hello World cells. So you can see that these cells are kind of large, so we're not going to really focus on the sizing in this video. Uh, I think the main point that I wanted to bring across is using a variety of multiple uh, different cells. So let's do one more, and we're going to do this next one in code, and we're going to create the sub-elements in code as well. So again, let's hit this, new file, um, Cocoa Touch class, and let's call this one coded table view cell keep this unchecked hit enter twice and let's do the same thing in here so we're gonna say static let identifier identifier is this and we can actually get rid of this awake from nib because there's no nib with uh related to this class and what i'm gonna do is in this cell we're gonna have a label as well as a image view. So let me get rid of this too. So let's create a label. Let's say label is a UI label. We'll return it. And let me copy and paste this to make this a little faster. We'll call this image view. Let's actually call this my label and my image view. The reason I like to do that is it uh, differentiates the default properties that a subclass has. And we're going to create a public function called configure with, and we'll just call it configure. We're not going to configure with because we already know the image name. And here we're simply going to say content view, add sub view, my label, and my image view. Whoops. My image view. And we want to also set the labels text. So we're going to say my label.text is it works. My image view dot image 
is a UI image named image2. And let's see, what else do we want to do? So why is this complaining? Okay, we should update this to be a UI image view. And what else do we need to do? We need to do the layout for these elements. Let's also style this to be a little more presentable. So let's say my label dot text alignment, let's make this centered. Let's make the my image view. You know, it would help if I spelt this correctly. Uh, but anyways, my image view dot content mode is scale aspect fit. Uh, we'll do fill actually. And let's override layout subviews. And we're gonna say super layout subviews. And the image view is gonna be on the left of the cell and the remainder of the cell uh, from the right of the image onward will be the label. So we're first gonna say the frame of this with a X, Y width and height. So X will be, let's say five, Y is five, let's say width of a hundred, height is a hundred. And let me copy this and say, the label, the X will be 105, Y can be the same, the height can be 100, and the width is gonna be the width of the cell. So we're gonna say content view dot frame dot size dot width minus 105. And this 105 is the width of the image and the five point buffer for the X of that image. And something else which is nice that I like to do is let's give this uh, image a rounded corner. So it'll be a circular image. So we'll say layer masks to bounds and layer uh, corner radius. And the corner radius will be half of the width and height, so 50. And I think that's enough of uh, laying out the cell. Let's go register it and see it in action. So let's copy our cell identifier. Let's head on over to the view controller. And again, similar to this first one up here, we're gonna say table register self and pass in that identifier. And let's actually make this 15 now since we have more uh, cells. And we'll say for this one, if index path is less than 10, show these. I'll say if index path dot row is less than five, we're gonna show that uh, that newest cell we created. So let's cell equals table view. Let's DQ that cell, that identifier, that index path, make sure to cast it. Now we have access to the configure function. Let's call it configure. And finally return the cell. So Something you'll notice when we run it is the sizing of this new cell we created might be off. And the reason is, is because we are now overriding the uh, height for the cell. So they're using the standard height. Uh, but nevertheless, you can see that it does work, but our images are overflowing the height of the cell. So what we can do is I think there's a function called height for cell. Let's just return 100 as a minimum. So they'll all be 100 now. So let's see, what did we bring in? It says height for footer. We want height for cell. I think that's a function. Maybe not, okay. Uh, anyways, let's ignore the height. But in this case, you can see that the uh, new type of cell is now showing up. Uh, I'll probably do a separate video on layout and sizing because it's. I think it deserves its own video, it's a bit of a complicated topic. But yeah, that's how you can use multiple uh, types of cells in a single table view. So a great example I like to give is if you think of the Facebook newsfeed in the Facebook app, they've got a bunch of different posts that they show, uh, photos, comments, shares, etc. All of those are table view cells. And they're, they have a bunch of custom cells and that's a great application of those cells. So yeah, that's how you add uh, different custom cells into your table view. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't smashed that like button already, please make sure you do so. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Helps me make more videos for all of you. 
Subscribe if you're new for Swift videos, tech thoughts along the way. Comment if you have any errors or issues. I try to reply to every single comment. I love hearing from you guys. And I'll catch you in the next one.